Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm back with my buddy from the Netherlands, Glenn. Welcome back, Glenn. Hey, Jeff. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, it's a crazy time, uh, but, you know, we're not the only crazy ones here in the States. I've been seeing some pretty alarming news stories from the Netherlands also. Yeah, you saw the water cannon. I saw the water cannon. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, Glenn's a police officer. So have you been shooting people with a water cannon, Glenn? Well, no, it's not me. But, yeah, there have been, there've been some riots and um, yeah, people are going crazy over here. I don't know something with the pandemic, I, I guess. The the vaccine can't come soon enough, but we're not talking politics today. We're talking bike racing. So I want to I want to get away from that for now and uh, talk bike racing. And um, this will be a familiar course for you guys. This is Glenn's interclub race. And I feel like I haven't done I haven't done it justice in talking about the, the points and also the GC competition in this race. So I just wanted to clarify, this is a series of races and I want to tackle this um, as a series of videos for this this upcoming season for you and I want to start with this video This is the end of the 2020 season. So this is September. This is months ago guys Let's talk about the two major competitions in this race series. So There is a sprint points competition Which is which awards points based on your position in two intermediate sprints and then the final What is it? Does it start at five points Glenn for the intermediates? Is that how that works? Yeah, the intermediate sprints are five points for the first place and uh, go uh, go down with every place one point. So the fifth place is one point. Some quick math here. That's 15 points on offer for the intermediate sprints. And then um, for the actual finish of the race, uh, it's, it's essentially double points. So you get 10 points for first, right? Yeah, that's right. And I'm not going to do that math. It's a lot of points for the finish. <laughs> yeah, but you want you want to you want to get the first place. Isn't it? So there yeah bottom line is you want to get the first place points and then let's talk gc real fast too gc is general classification that is the overall race leader and in this case the overall race leader for this series wears a blue a special blue jersey we're going to show that here in, in, in a minute um but uh but that's awarded just like the tour de france and other um big races that's awarded based on your on your timing so your overall position based on the time so one is position one is time and um, one is more for sprinters and one is more for the guys that can be good consistently, you know, race after race after race. Okay, so with that being said, Glenn, where do you stand in both of these competitions? Yeah, I'm fairly close for the GC, but uh, yeah, like a minute away. Um, and the points classification, I'm, uh, I'm in front uh, at this moment. So I'm in 18, eight, 18 points in front of the, um, the guy uh, you, you probably will remember with the knee covers. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We, we referred to him as knee covers in the last race. If you didn't catch that, check that out. That was a really exciting race, and um, and he's back for some vengeance this time. But we're gonna be we're gonna be referring referring to him as uh, red gloves, yellow shoes, because um, we need to differentiate these guys. They're all in the same jersey, and we're gonna be talking more about him in a little bit. But first, with uh, only three races left in the season, you have a healthy sprint competition lead. You're pretty close on GC. Are you still gonna be going for both? Oh, I'm not. I'm not letting the GC go um, uh, already uh, at this point. Um, but I'm. I'm betting more on the on the points classification because it's it's hard enough to win anything in bike racing. So, with this current standing, I'm. Uh, I'm just. Um, I'm just going for the for the points class classification. All right, and red gloves, yellow shoes. I told you guys we we're going to bring him up. He's going to be a very pivotal person in this race. Tell me about him. What, what's his standing right now? Yeah, he's he's close in the GC. He's at uh, 20 seconds from the from the leader, and he's 18 points behind me. So he has uh, some good standings, and I uh, I I reckon um, if I can't beat this guy, then uh, then join him. So I teamed up with him. Yeah, so you're gonna try to help him increase his GC lead. He's only 20 seconds behind in the GC overall, and then he is going to help you in turn consolidate your your spo uh, points competition in the in the sprints jersey. Yeah, exactly. So let's fast forward a bit and see how you guys, it's a, it's a pretty dynamic strategy. And uh, let's fast forward a bit and see how you guys execute. All right, so, so um, we're approaching the first intermediate sprint. It's in about 600 meters time. Glenn's already tried to break away because it's Glenn, guys. Uh, <laughs> Glenn's always super aggressive. He's an opportunist. I love his race style. But um, I gotta be honest, man, taking the front this far from the, the intermediate sprint is uh, a little dicey. Um, uh, how do you feel about your position right here? Yeah, I'm way, I'm way off position uh, right here. I'm lucky that my uh, my buddy here on the right um, is going to lead me out to, uh, uh, to to the to the finish, so I can get the so I can get the the, the sprint points. 
look in the rear the rear camera though. Red gloves is on your wheel, and I thought your agreement was the other way around, right? Shouldn't he be leading you out because he's helping you get the sprint competition, right? Yeah, I didn't know either what he what he was doing. Um, he takes the four points behind me, so I'm only um, yeah one point one point one point uh, more more than more than him. So yeah, maybe um, it was better to uh, to for him to lead me out. Well, in any case, good sprint. I mean, you still got it without his help. But yeah, that was a little bit strange to me. And, um, and you know, this, so this is the thing about like making an agreement before a race with, with somebody who um, isn't necessarily on the same team as you or has the same interests in you is like, yeah, you guys can make all the agreements you want. But when, pu when push comes to shove and your heart rate's up at 179 beats per minute, like, um, you know, truces can be broken pretty easily. And uh, that's the whole thing with, with making these pre-race agreements. So I'm not really sure if he's if he's in it for you. And here he is attacking, by the way. And without the blue jersey of the overall leader up there, you, you're able to fall back here, right? And make sure that you can rest and, and make sure that the, the overall leader is going to be doing the work. Yeah, he, he, has, he has to chase uh, at this moment. So uh, yeah, I'm comfortable, comfortable enough uh, to, uh, to drop some places. But yeah, the guy with the, with the, red, with the red gloves, um, uh, maybe uh, maybe he wasn't uh, thinking straight because his uh, heart rate was all jacked up. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but um, but there's the there's the overall uh, blue jersey right there. Yeah. He has yellow shoes also. Blue jersey, yellow shoes, overall leader. Yeah. And um, uh, you know, I want to I want to give you praise for for your situational awareness here. You're like, okay, well, you know, there's a threatening move off the front, but it doesn't have some really critical guys like the overall leader and a handful of others who are not going to let that get away. So. The obligation isn't on you to chase that back, and you're able to fall back here, find a nice draft, and then um, you know when you're, when you're going 29, 30 miles an hour and you're in a draft, you're saving all sorts of energy, and it does look like it's all back together now. Yeah, it's it's all back together, and uh, it's just waiting for uh, for things uh, to happen and uh, and uh, react to it. It's always such a critical moment in this race, you know, before there's established breakaway early on like this, I can tell from watching, it's not so much different from the way we, we race. It's, it's usually just crazy attack after attack after attack at the beginning of the race until there's something that gets established that people are happy with. And uh, I, see, I see something launching off the front right now. You're doing zero watts, so it looks like a good opportunity. There's another one. There's a yeah. third one. There's a fourth and a fifth. It's like, okay, well, at a certain point, with the blue jersey so, out of posi so far out of position, 1,463 watts, damn, Glenn. Yeah, you have to go. You have to go, and um, I'm uh, taking my buddy with with me to the front of the race because, yeah, I had an agreement. There he is, red gloves. Good point. He, if you guys look in the rear cam, you just pulled across um, red gloves to this move. Um, so, so that was that, the, the timing. That was great because there's already a group established off the front that was starting to open their gap. the The front of the peloton was was slowing down. Um, blue jersey out of position and then your teammate on your wheel it's like what else could you ask for you know what i mean that was everything that you needed to to make a a really well-timed well-executed attack and um that's exactly what happened and now that you guys hit this hill it looks like it's starting to fall apart i'm not sure if you still have a gap and red gloves is like drinking out of his bottle not really paying attention i would be you gotta be so laser focused like i was saying earlier because bam look at that now who's this guy glenn that just attacked yeah this is this is just raw talent this is a uh, continental uh, continental uh, bike racer from our neighborhood and uh, he's, he's he's talented and uh, when he when he goes and when he launches such an attack then my buddy uh, yeah he must be sharp he must be sharp and uh, be on this wheel to uh, yeah maybe to force something uh, and uh, to uh, to put the pressure on the on the GC leader he was sitting back there taking drinks out of his bottle going up a hill like right after a counterattack goes it just seemed like not the best time to lose focus because that would have been such a great opportunity with um you know, the overall le uh, leader, there he is, the blue jersey, with him out of position, not able to respond, that would have been such a great opportunity for your buddy in the red gloves to get away and um, potentially take over the, the race lead. Remember, guys, it's only 20 seconds between those two. If you, if you stop paying attention for just a moment, then you can, you can lose the bike race. It just happens that quickly. So, Glenn, you're up in good position here. And um, what's going through your mind right now? Yeah, leader is chasing, and it's, it's fairly quick, so... Um... Yeah, I thought uh, put the pressure on him, and uh, we uh, we just uh, we just leave to the to the front of the bike race with three with two other guys, and uh, with me is my is my buddy um, 
yeah, Red Gloves is up there now. And and I guess it's better late than never, right? Like he um yeah. he put in a put in an attack. It would have been better if he if he joined that if you guys, you know, joined that group that that's already off the front. But now you guys are not wasting any time. 34 miles an hour. Yeah, it's fast. And and he, and he's right. He's he's a fast rider, you know. So he got he has got the potential. He yeah, I don't know. Uh, you, you you got the you got the, to um, to spend your uh, your energy at the right moment mm -hmm. and maybe uh, yeah he, he was a bit lacking uh yeah it could have been better that's for sure like he could have gone with that earlier move which by the way there it is man you guys jumped across quickly and um i i will i will commend you for for just piling on more and more pressure on the overall leader which is what you have to do if you're trying to um overtake him in the gc lead which is uh what your what what your buddy in the red gloves is doing or what you're helping him do and i guess you're thinking you know while i'm up here i can help my friend out and i can gobble up all the sprint points yeah, so I'm I I want to I want to work. I don't care, you know. So long as so long as I uh, can get the sprint points, I uh, yeah I want to ride for him, and uh, I don't care uh, how tired tired I get. Yeah, so that's why you're doing work here with him in your draft. And uh, let's fast forward a bit and see how see how this plays out. All right, so that move looked really promising, but unfortunately, a few kilometers later, you guys do end up getting caught, and uh, you get caught on the hill, which is which is kind of terrifying because guys, at this level of racing, any time a breakaway is caught. 99% of the time, there's going to be a counterattack. And that's exactly what happens right here. So you're going to see some riders jump across. There goes another one. And it's hard when you're in a breakaway and you're in Glenn's position right here. You just spent, you just committed a lot of energy to bridge across to a move, to work with that move. And then you get countered. It's really hard to respond to that. So what I'm wondering <clears throat> is, what is Red Gloves doing here in front of you? Like, he should be, he should be focused entirely on jumping across to this move. So, so it looks like he is. That's good. But it, yeah. if you guys if you guys noticed, the leader was up there too. The race leader was up there too. Yeah, and he's forced to be in chase, uh, and it it has to be the other way around. You have to you have to um, put the pressure on him instead of the other way around. Yeah, and uh, and he should be putting into counterattack right now. Look, he's out of you know overall leader's out of position. Uh, one thing I will say right here is is you guys have been doing a really good job to put the pressure up until this point on uh on the overall leader there in the blue jersey and just look at his sh rocking his shoulders there in uh glenn's rear camera um i can tell he's getting really tired and he's probably thinking look i have more than half this race left to go i have 26 and a half kilometers left to go and i cannot sustain these efforts because of the work that you glenn and then your buddy in the red gloves have been piling on you've just been piling on the pressure but like counterattack now right the, there goes the pro conti rider he sees the writing on the wall he understands what's going on but like what is red gloves doing dude you have to continue applying the pressure because even though it hurts for you it hurts worse for the guy in the blue jersey who's been having to respond to everything up until this point so i don't yeah. know what he's doing just sitting here like yeah, can you yeah. tell me what he's thinking because i don't know what's going yeah, on i don't know gloves. he's he's sitting on the front of the race um well he should be uh, he should be riding with the with the with the brake with which is uh, is forcing the breakaway right right here and with that said, uh, that what was that? Seven riders, including a Pro Conti rider, um, looks pretty threatening. Let's fast forward a little bit and see how it shakes out. All right, Glenn, one kilometer to go. We skipped the second intermediate sprint because there was a breakaway up the road. There were no points on offer, so that's actually pretty good news for you because um, nobody up there was a threat for you, right? Yeah, and um, it, it's a bit of a stress relief, and um, yeah, focus on the on the on the end and on the finish, whereas uh, five points are on offer. Yeah, so you were able to save quite a bit of energy up until this point. It was a pretty, pretty crazy first third of the race, pretty uneventful, you know, second third of the race. And now here, the last kilometer, even though it's not for the race win, actually a couple of riders stayed away from that breakaway. There are still a ton of sprint points on offer, which is most important to you. So let's see how you, how you work your way up the, the field here for the, the field sprint. I like your position here. 650 meters to go. I wouldn't want to lose any more wheels. You are taking the inside line through these these bends, which makes a big difference when you're up in the high 20s, low 30s miles per hour, high high 40s, low 50s for for you uh, metric folk. Yeah, it's really important to to hold a wheel and have a draft when you're going this fast. And Glenn, not gonna lie, man, you could be doing better holding a draft. You're kind of half wheeling, which in your defense, like you're trying to hold your position. But man, when you're going 32 miles an hour and you're not in somebody's draft like you just saw back there, it costs you about 750 watts, which you don't want to be doing coming into a sprint. Now, with 200 meters to go, you just lost too many wheels there, and I'm afraid that at this point, I don't care if you're Mark Cavendish, <laughs> there's no making up yeah, eight lost. bike lengths. Yeah, yeah. But, but you still pop off a decent sprint. I mean, it's not the best numbers. We saw Glenn do 14 on 
1,260 something watts, almost 1,500 watts. So you didn't hit those numbers, but um, you still snuck uh, a few points in there. Yeah, I got I got tent, but if you see here on the left, who's there? It's Red Gloss. Who was... What is he doing? <laughs> I thought we had an agreement, and he was leading me out for the finish. Man, yeah. well, yeah. I can I can talk all the shit I want because I'm an ocean away. I don't have to go on a group ride with him next time. But like, what is he doing? Totally sabotaging your agreement, which is uh, not you don't make friends that way, guys. No. Maybe next time you see him at a group ride, uh, you can hit him with a water cannon, Glenn. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a that's a pretty good idea. No, he, uh, I, I I got to him and I told uh, what I thought. Uh, and maybe uh, he's my he's my teammate after all. So maybe uh, we uh, we both got uh, got uh, a little bit better from it. Yeah, well, that's a nice way of saying it. You can still you still have my permission to hit him with a water cannon if you want. <laughs> okay, I will, I will remember that one. <laughs> All right, bud. Hey, Glenn, always nice chatting with you. Love this footage. And we have two more um, from the 2020 season we're going to get to. Pretty exciting finish. Super, uh, super excited to get into that um, with you, Glenn, and, and share it with you guys on the channel. And then I'm um, looking forward to the 2021 season. And I, we're going to be doing a better job, hopefully tracking these on a weekly basis once we get back into racing on the, on the regular. So, uh, Glenn, until next time, man. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Catch you later.